Hello and welcome to the IFT show in New Orleans. I'm Elaine Watson reporting for Food Navigator USA. Now a hot topic at the show this year has been the FDA proposal to crack down on trans fats by revoking the grass status of partially hydrogenated oils, which are a key source of artificial trans fats. Now this has generated a lot of debate in the industry. Some people think this is a great idea and we should get on with it and we can uh, switch overnight. Other companies say that this is actually still quite a technical challenge for companies and it could take several years to completely phase out the use of partially hydrogenated oils. Um, for example, we heard earlier from the American Bakers Association, which isn't happy with this proposal at all. So what do the oils and fat suppliers think, the real experts in this equation? Uh, to discuss this, I'm delighted to be joined by Mary LaGuardia, who is Market Manager for Omega-9 Oils at Dow AgroSciences, and you're a specialist in canola oil in particular. So uh, what's your take on this? Uh, are these companies, some of the bakers, are they dragging their heels or are there real technical challenges to overcome here? Well, I think indeed there are some technical challenges. And the, the products that remain in the food supply that have partially hydrogenated oils are the ones that remain because they are technically challenging. Right. However, there are advances in fats and oils um, themselves and also processing that can help alleviate some of these challenges. For example, plant breeding has um, created oils that have built in natural stability to oils. Partial hydrogenation doesn't need to be employed to soybean oil, for example, to keep the oil stable. So that's one way that partial hydrogenation can be removed. Now, taking those oils and then blending those with maybe some other naturally stable oils that have hard fats, like palm for example, can get to the um, needed stability and structure that some of these trickier applications require, like icings or bakery mixes. So there are you know, technologies out there that can be employed. Um, they exist today. So, so some of these companies that are saying, oh, you know, this is going to take five or ten years and you know, it's not possible today, is that just not true? Are they dragging their heels or could we do it overnight or could we do it tomorrow? Well, uh, again, it depends on, on the application, but certainly there are tools available today yes. for naturally stable oils, canola. Yes. There's um, over a billion and a half pounds of canola oil mm -hmm. in the market today mm -hmm. and that's a demand-driven crop. If the demand is there, the supply is, is, is ready to meet the needs. So looking at some of these um, applications where you don't, uh, obviously these higher lake oils, um, the canola oils which are already available and the new next generation of soybean oils that are coming onto the market. Yes. To what extent are they tackling this um, PHO replacement issue though? Because they're still liquid oils, aren't they? So if you want a, yes. a firmer, more solid um, fat, mm -hmm. how, how can they help? Well, yes. It's no longer a one-size-fits-all like sure. it was with partially hydrogenated yes. oils. So the naturally stable oils are a building block or a component. Mm -hmm. It's, again, replacing this, the functionality that partial hydrogenation brought to, uh, yes. for stability. Mm -hmm. So you take that piece mm -hmm. and you blend it with mm -hmm. another, like a palm oil, to build back in structure. Mm -hmm. Then you can also employ oil processing techniques yes. such as interesterification yes. to create a fatty acid profile uh, with melting properties that are required yes. um, and so forth. So, sure. so that's that's how they're getting at the issue. So looking at canola oil more generally, I and mean, if you look at charts of oil usage in the US, mm -hmm. um, canola oil usage has surged over the past 10 years. Yes. But what's driven that? So as, as food manufacturers mm -hmm. have moved away from partial hydrogenation, yes. they've gone to naturally stable oils, mm -hmm largely canola and palm. Mm -hmm. And so that has really driven uh, a step change in the use of canola. Mm -hmm. There's also been investment along the whole value chain of canola. Mm -hmm. So from a seed development side, mm -hmm. the agronomics have improved their varieties that growers want to grow. Mm -hmm. From oil processing, significant investment has been done, doubling the capacity to process canola. Mm -hmm. So in essence, there's a, a greater availability more affordability and, uh, and the functionality exists to replace partial hydrogenation. Well, looking at the sort of nutritional um, profile of canola, but also the consumer perception of yeah. canola, if you think about consumers and oils, I guess a lot of people would say olive oil is the real healthy oil, 
monounsaturated oil, the Mediterranean diet and so on. So uh, yeah. what about canola? How do consumers view canola and should they view it in a similar light? Consumers do recognize canola as being one of the more healthful oils. According to the, uh, a very uh, recent IFIC study, consumers consider canola oil um, just a, as, almost as healthy as olive oil. It's like second to olive oil. They've stated they recognize that because it's got um, more of the good fats and less of the bad fats. So they recognize it's low in saturated fat and high in more heart healthy fats. Okay, well thank you so much for joining right. us today, thank Mary. Thank you very really much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. This is Elaine Watson reporting for Food Navigator USA.